Very good first meeting with the Honourable Foreign Minister Dr. Mahmoud. A very wide-ranging discussion. Uh, it's very good to welcome a Foreign Minister who knows Europe well. Of course, he has very strong connections to Belgium, which is the headquarters of the European Union. So he's, he's studied there, he knows Europe well and how Europe functions. So we had a very wide-ranging discussion about how we take forward EU-Bangladesh relations. And there's a lot on our agenda, as you know. We are going to start negotiating a new partnership and cooperation agreement very soon which is a very wide-ranging new generation agreement. We only have one other in South Asia, covering all different policy areas of, of collaboration. We also talked, of course, about the, the more broad global situation, so what's happening in the Middle East, uh, the, the Ukraine conflict, the Russian aggression in Ukraine, which is, a, of course, a huge priority for the European Union. And we talked about uh, the Rohingya crisis, so all of the areas where we have long-standing collaboration with Bangladesh and where, of course, collaboration will continue for many years to come. So it's a very fruitful first meeting and uh, a very a dynamic discussion. And I look forward, um, and we look forward in the European Union to taking forward EU Bangladesh relations uh, with the Honorable Foreign Minister. Ambassador Charles, what is the future of EU Bangladesh relationship in the next five years? I think in the next five years, we'll be really seeing a, a step change in our relationship, and that will be driven by the new partnership and cooperation agreement. A partnership and cooperation agreement is a much more political in nature than the existing agreement we have with Bangladesh, which dates to 2001, and that's mainly premised on development cooperation. Of course, development cooperation is still a part of what we do here in Bangladesh, but as you know, we had our first political dialogue a year ago, and that covers international affairs as well. And it's important that we have that mature uh, discussion on re respective foreign policy, not just about what's important in our immediate bilateral relations, but what's happening in the wider world and how Bangladesh and the European Union can influence um, things of shared priority. So, of course, that includes the Middle East and, and of course, it includes um, the Ukraine conflict. But we are, we'll be seeing, of course, in due course, other ministers in, in the areas where we directly engage with, with the government of Bangladesh. But this was a very good, wide-ranging... Uh, and you the past. <laughs> no, of course not. The past is very important. Uh, we still have our election expert mission in, in town. As you know, they haven't left yet. They will be making a report that will be made public um, thanks to the agreement of the, the government of Bangladesh. So um, it's not a question of that. It's a question, though, of <laughs> making sure that we um, put our relations on the right path for the years right. to come. Well, we have many priorities, you know, and, and for us in, the, in the, these seven years period that we've set our priorities for our development engagement, but of course, renewable energy, the Global Gateway flagship project, we discussed that with the Honourable Minister, you know that the Prime Minister, Honourable Prime Minister, was in Brussels in October. We now have to make that 400 million euro agreement into reality on the ground. And Bangladesh is one of the few flagship countries for the Global Gateway around the world. And this is where we, we will um, make a test case of our cooperation through um, helping Bangladesh reach its goal of uh, generating um, energy from renewable sources. And I look forward to taking that forward. Of course, the Rohingya crisis, which we must never let become a forgotten crisis, is a huge shared priority, over one million refugees. And we all know the challenges that are happening also on the other side of the border in Myanmar now. We want to work closely with that as one of the key humanitarian donors. But many issues from climate change to migration, we discuss migration issues, uh, legal pathways to Europe. There's a lot on the agenda and that reflects the maturity of our partnership. No, we, we have... I, I won't personally talk, of course, it's not my job, but we have a special envoy for Myanmar who is in constant contact with the various players. Of course, ASEAN is playing a very key role. So um, it's a very complex situation. What we are focusing on here is supporting the government in hosting over one million refugees and the costs associated with that.